I was a uh, PhD student at LSU and I wanted to uh, write my dissertation on the kind of uh, relationship that fans have with their teams. They didn't like the idea. It was either football or a PhD and I chose football. I mean, ever since I was a little kid and, and you'd watch the NFL films, the Steve Sable stuff, I thought, you know, wouldn't it be great to watch a game in St. Louis or wouldn't it be great to go here? And so I just finally got tired of wondering and thought we just might as well do it now. If you're not living your dream, you're living somebody else. Brett is probably the only guy in the world whose dream that I would follow. It's about going around the country, a road trip, a VW bus, which is kind of the uh, iconic road trip vehicle, and kind of merging the VW culture with the NFL culture and finding these, um, kind of finding these fans that are above and beyond uh, your normal run-of-the-mill person who goes to the games. Like, we kind of want to find out what makes him tick and uh, why they do the things they do. It's also about us making it to all 31 stadiums in 17 weeks and the challenges that using a 1967 VW bus present. Ah, uh, you know, on the road, don't be afraid to look around and take That's things right. apart. I don't think he knows who he's talking to. He's uh -huh. encouraging people look to around. take things apart. See what you find. <laughs> Whatever extra parts you don't have with you, that's what's going to fail. Yeah, if, you get, if you're on a super, super hot day, then stay out of the heat of the day, or do shorter trips at a time, a few hours at a time, or so drive, it, drive at night if it's really hot near. What's the worst thing you've ever seen happen to a VW bus on a, on a long trip? You really? <laughs> Catch fire and it's gone. Yeah. Catch fire? Yeah, and you know, because if it really gets going, everything's magnesium in there, you're not putting it back out, so the whole thing will go. So we would just run for our lives? Then? Well, just pull out all your stuff real quick while you can. Because <laughs> you're going to lose it. Is there a chance that we could make it the whole 25,000 miles without an issue? Oh, yeah. You know, just, just don't over, don't push it too hard. Just take your time. Be relaxed. Thanks. All right. So, what the heck are we doing? We're in a 1967 VW bus, albeit a bus in good shape. We're driving 25,000 miles. What did you get me into is what I want to know. And. Someday is not a day on the calendar. You know, you saw all those pennants growing up in the NFL Films deal, and someday you would get there, and I lived 40 years and someday never came. So, I made today something. Yeah. Boom, boom, boom. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Live from the La Quinta Inn. Boom. Finger Nation ran into some tough luck yesterday on the rainy road. The squeaky wheel caused a little bit of a problem for the threesome of Rhett Gramet Bauer, Eric Carpenter, and Grayson Berry. M Mr. Gramet Bauer, how do you think we're going to do today down 01 to the road? Has to get better. Has to get better. Do you see any mechanical problems in the beautiful VW bus that could, could pose a problem? Other than operator error, I think we're good to go, man. I think we're good to go. The boys from Foam Finger Nation versus Denver tonight on ABC. Ban -am, ban -am. And uh, it never seemed like we were making it to Denver, and then all of a sudden, uh, good things started happening. Um, uh, Rocky the Leprechaun. Uh, about 31 years ago, started leading cheers here. I was the Leprechaun for the Colorado Lottery, and I'm the only official Leprechaun in the United States of America. Local fans are good class fans. That's a nice thing. So I try to get out there and get them the spirit going and the cheers are going. Go Broncos! <laughs> really cool show going on, sort of an homage to Wayne's World with the Broncos. Talk about that relationship between the fans and the players a little bit. That's really what our show is kind of about as well, and sort of how yeah, that works. It's great. Know. You know, we have uh, Reggie Rivers as a guy, a uh, former Bronco that we spent a lot of time with, and he says you find out in Denver, you run out of that tunnel and you see the 70,000 people, and then as you stay here, you find out that they're not just 70,000 people. They're part of the community. They're part of the family. And the players get really close to the fans. It's, it's unbelievable. I mean, what, what team, who does that? Nobody does that. 
Hey, good morning, guys. That is right live today. Sports Authority Field here at Mile High for the big Broncos opening day kickoff tonight, 630. And it's all about the foam finger nation. This is Grayson. Say hi, Grayson. Hey, guys. There you go, Foxy Moms. Three guys, one van, 17 weeks. Every stadium will talk to him. Oh, the stories. Coming up next. Hang on. So every time we go to a stadium, we have a decal for that team. We put it on the back of the bus so people can keep track. We can keep track of how many teams we've seen, how many teams we have left, that sort of thing. So this is a ceremonial first sticker on the back of the bus. We're day three into the trip. And uh, I don't think people realize how difficult this was going to be. I didn't realize how difficult this was going to be. We, uh, we underestimated the heat in Texas, which is something you should never do considering we live there. We've been sitting here for about 30 or 40 minutes of time. We could have been driving in a regular car, but have to let uh, Hail Mary cool down, so that, uh, that kind of Here's sucks. Here's the deal. Rhett won't let me drive. <laughs> Rhett is glued to Hail Mary's uh, driver's seat. He is white knuckling it, and I'm very impressed. He will at some point have to let me drive because I'm the only other person of the three to know how to drive standing, albeit Hail Mary is a very special kind of uh, standard transmission. What do you think about getting some sleep? Um, I'm excited to be in the house. <laughs> I mean, this is bad here. Come on in. So, Bonnie, Jim was saying that America's Cup is there this weekend, yes. Our, our 1967 bus is uh, tenuous, and we need to sort of, we, can't, we probably don't want to drive it downtown. and. We'll probably take the part. That's what we'll probably it's way do. down here in South San Francisco. Candlestick. Oh, candlestick. I'm thinking of yeah, yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm thinking of um, the giant giant stand. Giant stand. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. No, it's candlestick. Yeah. Candlestick is all the way to the other way end. Heck down here. Sorry. What? What? Uh oh. Candlestick. You can play Barbadero. But no, you can you can always oh, get off anyway. You can yeah. add. So to get out, we have to add money. Yeah, no, no, no. you're just gonna get out to talk. I'm just gonna check scores, man. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm gonna get on the train and we'll see how far it takes us. <laughs> Yesterday, we met a great 49ers family. And, you know, like some of my fondest memories, just Sunday wanting to watch football with my dad, not wanting to go to church with my mom. <laughs> very, very close to my dad, total daddy's girl, and he's the whole reason I was, you know, watching football. Been a fan of the Niners because of him, because he was a fan for so long, and I'm pretty sure we still have that jacket. So I hope, you know, my son wears it one day. Um, probably on a Sunday that this picture was taken, like, right before watching a game. Perfect. Um, and then we stayed last night in what could be considered the red light district of Fresno in this uh, <laughs> beautiful, beautiful establishment. Uh, it, but we were grateful just to have a bed. So if you think this is a high budget, high profile trip. Charger comes harder. Charger. How, did the, how did your relationship with the Charger King begin? What's that, what's that like? What's he Met like? I'm here last year. Die hard, Dago dedication. He's just a good dude. He has the best intentions for this team and this city. You know, we're doing a raffle here for breast cancer awareness. And, uh, you know, it's all about good times, good people, good friends, and good causes. I rent my own fire engine and leave the parade. <laughs> Plain and simple. I lead the fans and the fans are what makes all of this happen. From Denver to San Francisco to San Diego and out of Houston. It's times like this you wonder why you're even doing You think you know what you're doing. You really don't. And we already had to call John once. And uh, the sun's going down. And we are in 
We haven't even made it to Yuma, Arizona. We're still in California. And we want to be back in Austin and Houston tomorrow. We start the engine, it starts to sizzle back here. So what we need to get, I guess, is some degreaser. It's a, it's a little, little oil spill, like just a little bit of oil back there. But when we turn on the engine, it sizzles and it sparks a little bit. So we already cleaned it off and bunch of it up, Brad, and see if it sizzles. All right, let's start the water. I'm just afraid we get on the road and we'll explode. <laughs> I have showered at my first truck stop today. It was fantastic. There was soap, it was goju soap, I believe, and it cleaned everything really well. I shaved, so this is something that I can do. I've been wearing my underwear for about four days now. I've been wearing the same shirt for about four days now. My jeans just sort of, uh, they're just sort of hanging on my hips at this point. Like I could be pants at any point, and uh, uh, it's interesting. But anyway, we made it through three stops. Um, we're going to Houston, my hometown. The quality of the football is untouchable uh, compared to the CFL leagues. Uh, it's just top rated. The sense of community, I've, I've been to a whole bunch of different stadiums and uh, like we don't have this kind of atmosphere in Calgary and the atmosphere is unbelievable. Well, the tailgating is nowhere near the same level, right? You know, similar to the football, it's just nowhere near the same levels. And uh, down here, it's it's a weekend event for tailgating, you know, versus going to a football game for two hours. Well, it doesn't. We can't drink at our tailgating. They took that away a couple of years ago. So you're not allowed to do that at all. So it really limits how much fun you can have, right? You don't see setups like this in uh, in Canada. Like they just the size and scope. It's just so much first, larger. You know, when you, it sounds silly, but when you walk into the stadium, there's a smell. There's a smell. Like it's just it's football season. I got to see my Texans uh, barely beat two non-playoff teams. I can see that there's going to be one memory that, that stands out from the crowd, and that's my pick six in the parking lot, uh, specifically the yellow lot at Reliance Stadium. Picked it off, ran it back. There's a couple of reasons why that'll be in everybody's mind. One is I'm not going to stop talking about it, and uh, two, I'm not going to stop talking about it. We, we got a little bit of flack from one of the corporate people for the Texans, we were able to put that behind us, we got to the yellow lot, interviewed some really cool fans, including my favorite, which was a Buffalo fan who happened to be at the 1993 uh, debacle where the Oilers, of course, suffered the greatest uh, comeback. Everybody was leaving, so we migrate down to the bottom as Frank Burke is doing the comeback. And I think it's just one of the best games in history because the biggest comeback, made it in the playoffs, and Unfortunately, it's all been downhill shortly thereafter, you know what I mean? Dad once told me that to be really rich, you couldn't be scared to be really broke. I thought he was talking about money, and it turns out I don't think he was talking about money. I've never been more broke in my entire life. We have nothing. We're in the middle of Tennessee at the Volkswagen dealership, yet I've never felt more, uh, more wealthy in my entire life. I've learned what people mean all across the country, not just my family, but the people you meet and how nice they are and how generous they are. No, no one's a bigger realist when it comes to being the Texans. And the, and the Texans organization absolutely robbing each and every fan out of their pockets, stealing money from them. And the product on the, you know, on the field and in the stadium, it, it looks like they're the greatest team of all time. It's a wonderful presentation and it's a lie. It's a bold-faced lie. The Texans will never sniff a championship with that moron as their coach and that incompetent as their quarterback. And it seems like we okay, were the only. Okay, okay. But you could find five dollar beer at, at the stadium. Did which you? Is did you? It's something you couldn't do at Candlestick Park. Yeah, you know so what? if you, I, I ran to the top of the stairs the, and there's no rocking steps. What? I did hear they took it down recently. Well, it's it's to the right of the steps. <laughs> it's clear. It's just wow. No, they used to have it at the very top, and now it's just to the right of it. it? Oh, yeah. Why would they do that? <laughs> have, you guys, have you guys had to do like any auto maintenance yet? Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, yeah. We have the footage of it too. Yeah. What, what did you have to do? Oh, it's terrible. We have to. Uh, uh, every three thousand miles, you have to uh, adjust the valves. Uh huh. So that means they have to be spaced correctly. Exactly right. And so we have a tool that we shove into the valve, and it tells us whether it's the right 
the right distance. What's that thing called again? Uh, a go no go gauge. At what point in your life, Sean, did you say, you know what? I think I can take it to another level. That's a fan. The opening game in 1995. It was the uh, actually the Ricky Waters' first game here as an Eagle. Um, it was against Tampa Bay. I went to pick up a buddy of mine. Had the face paint and jersey on and stuff, and had the gear a little differently and everything. And his buddy, his brother said he had a pair of shoulder pads in the shed. He said, you want to just throw them on, have some fun with it. And I'm like, you know what, let's do it. So I threw them on. And ever since the opening day of 95, I've, I haven't changed. I mean, it's just, I've changed the gear a little bit, but it's been face paint and shoulder pads. And then just literally went to the full football gear from that point on. We get to go to NFL Films tomorrow. Uh, I've been, these guys haven't been. So it's, uh, and they know more about production than I do. And I was pretty impressed with it. So really impressed with it. So that should be really cool. And then, uh, had a great, a great conversation with um, uh, a, a serious Eagles fan, goes in full pads, and during the interview he couldn't sit still. So he's amped up, starts the night, it's the only game of the, a game of the day. This is exciting stuff, man. Boys, are we having fun yet? This is awesome. Good stuff. Great. It's I love this. You know, you get put up in a... Nice house in Jersey. Thank you, living the dream. And then you a little too much glue. Then you find out you got two ball tires. How's she running after we fixed it? She's running great. Actually, she's running really, really well considering we have two ball tires in the back <laughs> and a belt that's kind of uh, not in the greatest of condition, but we're going to try to make it to Pittsburgh. I don't know what's worse, the, the rain, because we've taken on more water than the Titanic right now. So we pulled over. We don't have windshield wipers, which isn't a big deal, but it's, uh, it's the inside. You just get soaked. And so, so I don't think they're buying into some of my, my, my false positivity about being halfway there or the, the radar saying that it was going to clear up in Elverson, Pennsylvania, you know, in a few minutes as opposed to 2 a.m., which is what the radar actually said. But it's all about this, this German trick I learned a long time ago. Okay, so this is a true story. In a mine in Germany, these miners were all underneath, trapped in this mine, right? And only one of the guys had a watch on him. And they said they had two hours left, or they had like four hours left of oxygen, right? So the guy with the watch would say, we give him an extra couple of hours as the hours went by. And no one was the wiser. Only one person died. The guy with the watch. So it was a rough night last night. We slept in the bus at the Hampton Inn. Um, nothing good about it at all. We got waterlogged last night. Um, we finally realized that sort of the, the wind is blowing the water in through the vents. It's just awful. <laughs> it's, just, it's just the most uncomfortable experience. Now we gotta do is, uh, we gotta plug the holes up in the bottom of the uh, bus, which is causing all the water to come I through. Don't and the vent is the main thing. Anyway. In the vent. I, I, don't, I don't know if it's, I think you would have to... Uh... See, we can literally get under the bus, bro, and duct tape the holes. Seriously. That's gonna help tremendously. Okay. Tremendously. And then we'll, uh, we'll I don't just keep retaping them. <laughs> Snow, sleet, rain, tornadoes. I guess we're out of the hurricane season, but uh, we'll be okay. Uh, it just makes me happy. That's all. It's my life. Maya and my wife, my kids, everybody in my family, all our friends. Just you know. love. <laughs> yeah, I just love that started when I was a teenager, and it's just gotten stronger and stronger. Because they're, they're such a successful organization, and it's so well run, and it's just so such a part of the city that I live in. So Ram Man, talk to me about how you became 
ram that. Well, what happened was we found out, we were at, originally we found out, we thought we were getting the Jacksonville Jaguars. They were coming back, we are getting St. Louis, football's getting sent back to St. Louis after having the Cardinals. Um, but we were getting a football team back, so we're like, oh, we're getting the Jaguars. And shady dealings behind the scenes, we ended up losing the Jaguars to Jacksonville. But here comes Georgia Frontier, St. Louis's own, moving the team, well, the Rams. by Georgia team. Frontier because she saw that the fans did not like her. And <laughs> she saw that, well, basically, in all actuality, St. Louis gave her a, a guaranteed paycheck for 10 years. Well, yeah. I mean, it was the first logo ever to appear on an NFL helmet. The horn, yeah, the horn was the first one ever. And Everything else was one. And this is a real, like, low-key subliminal message, like. <laughs> yeah, they're when, bringing it back. Exactly. Like, yeah, I have it on my shirt underneath there, like yeah. yeah. yeah they're making that's it. Cool. That's not even. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's on, on my beans. Yeah. They're, yeah. They're bringing... And then to find out that the franchise is moving to your town, and then we get the greatest show on turf, and we get to start making new memories for the next generation. So it's, uh, it's been a while since we've actually sat down and done, done a confessional. I think the, uh, the time from uh, the time we went to Kansas City until now it's, has provided perspective of what this trip is all about. I mean, you have, uh, you have ideas, you have preconceived notions of what it's going to be like and what you want to get out of it and that sort of thing. And uh, then when you're actually living it and trying to make it from place to place, yeah, it turns out to be something entirely different and you learn something, you know, a little bit about yourself and a lot about people along the way. And you start thinking, you know, the miles start clicking away and there's nothing, there's nothing really going on um, when we're driving. So it gives me time to think and reflect on where we've been, what we're doing, where we're going, and if we're doing the right thing, that sort of thing. So we went to Kansas City and always wanted to go to Arrowhead, and it didn't disappoint. Loud stadium, great fans. So hopefully the coffee's hot and the beer's cold and the props are cooking over there, so. game. This marks the uh, quarter way point of our season. There it is, the Kansas City. Well, curious to see how this duct tape job uh, that Eric and I uh, did yesterday holds up. We've got these windows duct taped and we've got the vent up, up front duct taped so very little or no air comes through here and so far it's worked like a charm. Um, they should hire us to duct tape VW buses because we did it so My well. Understanding. We actually went to a lot of work we didn't have to do to get this felt up. Right. Yeah, I'll show you. And then, and then there was a guy online that did it in five seconds. With a even, screwdriver? Yeah. Did you see that video? Yeah. yeah. The motor yeah. running? Yeah, you can do that. When you say you, do you mean... It's, it can be done. It can be done, but you, you're well, taking I, it kind I've of a chance. I've seen people do it, but I've never done it, so we'll see if it works. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do that. I'm going to have you start the engine. I'm going to see if I can flip that on there while it's running because it'll be a lot easier. Yeah? Yeah. Go ahead and start it up. Okay, let me, let me grab the keys. Just stay there so I can tell you to shut it off if I have to. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it did it work, man, just like it says. Is that Hell the yeah. first time you did it? Yeah, I've never done it before. <laughs> never had one lesson. It actually worked. <laughs> yeah. We know the end result, but that guy doesn't know what we did or what we didn't do. And it's not something you could go like, oh, you guys did this. This is exactly what you did wrong. He's just like, it could have happened when you were tightening the valves. It might not have. So we couldn't have fixed it in a million years. I mean, I'm not trying to tell you crap you don't need, but this will make everything live longer. Because the, what these do is they mushroom out the end of the valves. Okay, and so how does that impact my ability to adjust the valves? What, what do I need to do? None whatsoever. None you, will whatsoever. you will adjust the valves exactly the same so way. So this is actually the 
opposite side of what I'm seeing, right? So that's what I adjust. Correct. Got it. I'm okay. worried about how far in they are. Yeah. That shows me that they've that they've worn down quite a bit. Okay. All right. Yeah. Let's do that. So. Okay. Yeah, my goal is to get you out of here on the cheap. I'm not. Well, that's always good, but we also have to uh, make it fourteen thousand more miles. Right. Without that's issue. Right. And, and I, I don't know when we'll. That's why I'm trying to, I want to use good stuff and not. Here we go, brownies. Here we go, brownies. Here we go. 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 What's it like being a Browns fan? What characterizes Browns fans? They seem very uh, loyal. I'll cut you off right there. Yeah. Heart, heart and loyal. We are loyal to the end. We do get upset. We, we want to hold our players to a higher standard. Um, but we... We're in it for the long haul. I mean, there's there's no other way. I'm, I will never wear another other colors from another city. Those okay. guys are crazy, and they fill a bar with about 300 screaming Browns fans that are all transplants or fans just in the Chicago area that love the Browns for whatever reason. Fans, I mean, truth is they're the best fans in the NFL, hands down. I am blessed to get to do what I do every day, and they make it fun. Whether we're winning or we're losing, this town has fun, they're passionate about their football, and the fans are incredible. They follow us everywhere. You can't go anywhere around the country without running into Browns fans. They're loyal. They never give up. There's always the next game. There's always next year, but every week they're painted up. They're here. They're ready. They always have hope, and they're crazy, and we love it. I, I could wrap it up in one word for you. A Browns fan is loyal, loyalty, and that's what it comes down to. We're loyal for our team, our city, our players, our, you know, our fan base is loyal. I can't really speak for the dog pound, but that's a rabid bunch of fans here, and they are, they are the loyal, they are the diehard, they are the, the face of the Browns fans. I'm watching football about from uh, 2001, yeah, and I think it's the best game in the world. So, uh, the only game I'm watching. What is, what is it about it that you like so much, do you think? I don't know, it's very sportish for me, and um, very dynamic, and uh, real men playing it. So, so it's beautiful, it's, it's the spirit of America for me. Uh, in Cincinnati, we, uh, we got to meet uh, a really special fan. I really enjoyed this guy a lot. Um, and he's really just a good all-around guy. Uh, his name is uh, Gary Faulkner, also known as Misled Cincinnati. Um, he has grown out his beard for, I think, about three years now, two or three years. And he paints his face and his beard um, in some sort of theme of the, of the week. It's usually a Cincinnati theme, but um, we were there. We were there during, uh, you know, Breast Cancer Awareness Month. So when we saw him, he made his beard into yeah, a, I'm a fan breast of cancer ribbon. You know, so basically, I sat down with her, took five minutes, and I was like, you know what? I was like, let's do an orange and black beard. You know, let's see what we can come up with. I was like, you know, there's not really anyone dedicated doing the things I do or that I've researched too much. You know, with their beard, and you know, so now we go all out for every game or practice or scrimmage, anything that was at training camp. Having like a face in the city has definitely opened opportunities to do more. And, uh, you know, I'm going to take advantage of anything that I can to help people, so. This guy is awesome. <laughs> we, got, we got the win. Who day? I've come to the conclusion that uh, this bus runs my life. I don't have a life anymore. 
My life is dictated by a 1967 VW bus. We'll just put it in. That's like a look good All right, so let me... Just let describe me, them. Yeah. Well, I think they're... They uh, look like George Went and the guy from the discount double check commercial is what they look like, and they sound like them, too. So can I play them in voicemail? Sure. All right, turn it up on high. All right, so we're... Uh, this is the... Uh, I believe this is them. Hi, this is the Super Fan from Chicago. I'm going to leave a message about um, the folks here in Asian Company, Chicago, this Thursday night for the Bears Giants game. I spoke here with the gentleman over the Twitter, and uh, I had gotten this number, so I wanted to give a call and get in contact to set a plan for Thursday. Um, my phone number is 773-773. Alright, so we're not going to give their phone number away, but it's the Super Fan on Twitter. Go check okay, it out. The city of Chicago is a very, uh, very cool place, okay? It's when most of the year, in the summertime, our city does something very funny. It splits in half. Cubs and Sox, okay? Then, when the weather starts to get a little cooler, something strange happens. The Bears start to practice, the Bulls start to practice, and the Hawks start to practice. And what the city, which once was divided, comes together in a very passionate and very powerful thing and we like to call it the super fan nation. Tell me about that, man. What's, what's, the, what's the grub like? Well, well we, like, we like to call it super fan food around super here. Super fan food. Rule number one is there's sausage can be added to anything. That's, the, that's basically the first food group, okay? You basically have like pork sausage, and then you have beef and other meats, and then you have vegetables, french fries, you know, pasta, counts. Getting hungry. Yep. Uh, if you're on a diet, fried chicken's always the way to go. <laughs> the thing is, you realize the other team always wins because somehow Ditka was influenced the other team to win. It's always influenced by the Bears or Ditka. For example, this last week, uh, we lost to the New Orleans Saints. Okay. You realize that their running back Pierre Thomas had a great game. He's from the state of Illinois. First of all, he went to the University of Illinois. Their colors are orange and blue, just like the Bears. <coughs> And they're founded by George Papa Hallis, who hired Mike Ditka, right? Not to mention that Ditka coached the Saints for a little while. So Ditka coached the Saints and rubbed off on them the whole franchise. The current coach, Sean Payton, was quarterback in 87 in the strike season and was coached by Ditka. So he got to study under Ditka as quarterback. So all that helped him out. Plus, Drew Brees went to Purdue, and his backup quarterback was a guy named Billy who played for the Chicago Rush, who was coached by Mike Ho Hennessy. What is his name? Hennessy? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's the head coach of the Rush, and he played it's under Mike Dicka also. Uh, consists of uh, aviator glasses, a mustache, bears gear. And um, pregame, I just always like to kind of walk around. It's a ritual to kind of start talking, uh, kind of a little more with the accent. Uh, you know about the sweetness. The sweetness comes from my thicker. Does out the bears and the sweetness. <laughs> and then, are you familiar with the game of poker? Of course I am. So when the game's going on, we play a game where we bet chips. We bet corn chips, potato chips, yucca chips, pretzels. And then everyone wins because we eat them all. <laughs> That's called a win-win. So the pot is just various chips. It just grows and grows until it eventually disappears. The winner will win and then the winner will lose and the loser will win. The world wouldn't exist without the bears. This is true. If you think about it, the world as we know it today would not. my friends. Yeah, oh, that's awesome. Jay Hilgenberg, put it right down there. Okay, contender. So, um, we didn't have a place to stay tonight. Um, don't really have the money to stay somewhere. So we have Ralph Wilson Stadium as our backdrop. A Hail Mary VW bus. Uh, maybe pitch a tent out here in this open field. It's a beautiful field. We want to do 31 stadiums in 16 or 17 weeks. There are going to be nights like this. If you don't want to sponsor, if you want to sponsor, 
Well, then you're a sellout anyway. You got to live the life, man. That's what we're doing. Be a man. That's Suck it up. Right Leave it a field. Mm. Because we're a blue-collar town. Without, without football for the year, we're a blue-collar town. We would have nothing on a Sunday. Oh, I think uh, every team has a, a group that's avid, let's put it that way. We're all nuts. Okay. But we're special. Well, <laughs> uh, you know, once you, you uh, get involved with a certain team or start following a certain yeah, team, yeah. it's hard to give them up. Now, like, today, you'll probably go to the game. Yeah. There'll be a bunch of Bengals people in. Yeah. But you'll also see people walking through the stadium wearing New York Jets jerseys. They'll be wearing Patriots jerseys. They all just made the wrong turn on the throw. <laughs> that's all. But that's their team. You can't hold it against them. That's their team. Hey. So it was kind of accidental. Counterculture kind of kid, fascinated by things like Airwolf and A Team. But my dad said to me one day, "Why don't we uh, go to Wembley Stadium and see a game?" He uh, it was a game between the Bills and the Eagles in '92. Uh, he'd been to Philly, so he said he was going to support the Eagles. I, of course, chose the Bills. They won the game. And while we were there, there was these uh, fans from UB at this, the game who, uh, who talked us through kind of what the sport was and how it all works. And they also threatened to uh, cut important bits of me off if I didn't all carry on being a, sport, a Bills fan. <laughs> what makes the hammer a lot special, man? The hammer's lot is special is the fans. I just own a piece of the property. Sure, I do have a little control over their attitudes. But it's the tailgating, everybody getting along with each other that makes the parking lot. It's a simple formula. Everybody has a good time, and you don't mess around with your neighbors. You're just everybody. Fans from other teams are welcome. You just don't act like an idiot. So as I have a red Pinto wagon, you know, a relic from like you know the 60s, the 70s, and uh, I bought it in uh, 1986 for almost $300. And uh, here it is, 2013, and it's still rolling. And I actually cook right on the car itself. I'll have six grills going on the hood, pans and briquettes. I'll have, uh, you know, army helmet, sizzling chicken wings, a saw, sizzling bacon. I'll have a hamburger for, or break for hamburgers and hot dogs, a uh, hubcap for stir fry, a toolbox for shish kebabs, a shovel for uh, omelets and pancakes. Without any type of condiment on it. And he says, and everybody says, I, I, I need some ketchup. I need some ketchup. And everybody's like, you need ketchup, you need ketchup. The whole crowd is watching everybody. He's there in a circle, all rounded up to watch this. And, and he just walks around for an hour and takes pictures of people. That's what he does. He just walks around and takes pictures of people. And that is awesome. Someone uh, passed along a uh, clip about you and like five other Jets fans. I mean, we like to get you in like your a setting you're most comfortable in, not necessarily at a tailgate or at a Jets game, but maybe uh, if you have a man cave, a fan cave, or somewhere you go to relax, that we could get uh, all of you guys together. Uh, that would be great. He was the first one I spoke to. And very shortly after that, Anthony responded. And we went back and forth with a couple conversations. And it was a little apprehensive because nobody knew anybody. Well, I had actually posted my own ad on a Jet fan message board because we were down here watching the Charger game. As soon as the Charger game was over, I'm like, babe, I'm going to Indianapolis. I don't care. I'm going to Indianapolis. So I went upstairs. I got on the computer, put my own ad, said, I'm driving to Indy. Who wants to ride with me? Split costs. Got a couple of responses from people saying, ah, how do we know you're not a serial killer? <laughs> you're this, you're that, you're crazy, blah, blah, blah. So I got no responses. Meanwhile, I bought my own ticket to the game. I said, I'm, I'm still going to this game, don't know how. Then I get an email from this guy saying, hey, I saw your ad on the Jet message board. I'm going out to Indy in a van with these other guys. You should get in touch with the guy with the van. Wow, I remember laughing my ass off. Yeah, yeah. We just <laughs> oh, really got oh to know God. each other and talked about football and life and, you know, whatever else came across and... We really bonded on that 12 hour trip. We talked about who was the serial killer. Yeah, we <laughs> did. We said, who was most likely to be the serial killer out of the group? So who yeah, was it? Yeah, <laughs> what do you think of all this craziness? Um, honestly, I, when Mike first told me that he was coming here today, I thought it was absolutely crazy. I was like, what do you mean you're going to be in a, like, a, a documentary? Like, what are you talking about? He, you know, he's getting ready this morning. He's like, He's like, babe, when I make it big for this documentary, you're going to be jealous. I'm like, okay, okay. That's awesome. You know, just totally blowing it off. Well, I get a lot of free weekends. Um, <laughs> it's true. 
<laughs> it was when we first met and he was so addicted to sports. It was, you know, family gatherings. There's got to be a TV with sports on. So he's just very dedicated, very devoted. And this is why it's better we have the basement because I think we would go crazy if we were sharing a TV constantly together. At least I'll come down, I'll watch a couple of games with him and then I'll run back upstairs and shut the door so I don't hear the yelling. <laughs> yeah. It's weird how you can meet people and form a bond with them over just one thing in common and then have it stretch into other things. So since I lived through it once, I was like, all right, I, he's okay. He'll find a good friend. Okay. Were you a Jets? Were you this much of a Jets fan before? No. Um, it was right around, right after this, uh, the, yeah. uh, the playoff for this event happened that um, I started getting into it. He actually took me to a game. It was a lot of fun. I was like, okay, I can enjoy it. Um, then I started getting more into it, and my happiness level has since decreased. <laughs> <laughs> but I do love it. <laughs> oh! J E T S Jets Jets Jets. Kind of ride me, and I was like, all right, I'm gonna wear it. So I took off the shoelace. I put the orange plate on around the neck and I wore it to the game and it was great. I mean, I got a lot of laughs in the stadium, in my tail, in my section, which is 137 in the old stadium, and they won the game. So after that, it just became uh, an, every, an every, every week thing. I wore it to the home game. You wore the Giants fan? All Giant fans are born into the family. If you're, if you're a dad or you're, you're your mom or your grandmother, your grandmother's a Giant fan, you have no choice. You're a Giant fan, trust me. <laughs> You got no choice. Just do the best we can. So I would say it's tradition. So that's what we are all about. Gene, how about you? Uh, again, I've been coming. I was sat through the 70s, the 80s, Ray Perkins. But we've always come. We've never not thrown our tickets away. We, we've come to the games. We sit in the stadium to the end of the game, no matter whether we're winning or losing. And it's tradition. It's a, it's a good... Good crowd, it's a uh, good harmony. Yeah, and, and our problem now is our kids don't know what it is to not come. So we keep this up for our kids. It'll be the next way. You know, when it's only you three and you break down in the middle of Rural North Carolina at 3 o'clock in the morning on your way to Tampa. And your, your, only, your only choice is to crawl in the bus and go to sleep until daylight and hope to get it fixed. Um, but as far as you can see, there is nothing. There's no civilization. There's nothing. And somehow you pull it out and you pull it off and you meet people. And the VW bus community, the VW air cool community has been, I mean, a lifesaver, literally a lifesaver. We uh, we have faced more adversity than I anticipated, and serious adversity. We have a place to take. Where'd you get the coffee? Uh, I, I uh, made it. <laughs> Do you want me to make you some? <laughs> This is our Elton here, and you can see our belt is being chewed up rapidly here. Turn it on, this thing wobbles around and eats into it. The belt is a serious problem. So we decided to pull over and we stopped at Arrington Road somewhere in North Carolina. Is he alright? Oh, I think he's just existing right now, trying to figure out. Oh, he wants to get out. Okay, that makes sense. <laughs> We're out here like, we don't know exactly what Grace is doing. <laughs> I'm ready for breakfast now. <laughs> hey, you guys open today? Excellent, we've got a 1967 VW bus and we're having trouble with the assault. I'm being towed right now. You don't have to whisper. I don't have to whisper. <laughs> <laughs> we're being towed to a uh, tow shop in uh, North Carolina and the tow truck drivers have agreed to take all three of us if we stay down. They were only going to take two of us to begin with, which I don't know how they were going to do. I mean, this is totally illegal to begin with. So, here we go. This is nice. I'm not sure uh, we're going to make 25,000 bucks. And this is, our, uh, this is our issue right here. It's cracked all the way, almost broken half. And uh, we're very fortunate that it didn't because 
this piece could have flown off and actually gone into the engine and messed up the engine. So we're kind of uh, we're kind of fortunate in one respect and very unfortunate in another respect because this little repair will cost us between five and six hundred dollars, and that's just money we don't have. Uh, so. It's uh, it's a good thing we got got it when we did. It's a bad thing that uh, well, a we had to spend the night in the bus on the side of the road. But it's also the money thing's a problem and the time thing's a problem. So we have to order the parts and it'll be done on Friday and we'll be at the Tampa game um, tomorrow night. But but this should be the end because I mean there's only so many parts you can replace on a VW bus. So I, you know I made an announcement earlier. We're 0-6. It's a brutal season. We're a dumpster fire of a franchise this year. There's not a single upside from the outside looking in. But we know the guys who are here. We know the players, the guys that lace up cleats, right? We know that we have people of character. We know that time will let us, you know, persevere and go through. And we always win here. We get to meet other fans. We get to support charities. We get to have a great time. And what the NFL needs to realize is the game is not just between the whistles. It doesn't stop and start there. They keep trying to compete with the home. You lose in that battle. What's different is I remember hugging the guy next to me who I don't remember when All-Star got the two-point conversion against the Washington Redskins because you know what? I was in the stadium. You don't get that in your couch. You're high-fiving your kid. That's great. I love your kid too. You didn't get to celebrate that victory when people had Oh, wow. That's such a broad spectrum. And, you know, there's all kinds. Um, you know, we're home to a lot of what you might refer to as super fans or the face painters or you know, the crazies and all. But I know people that, are, you know, come dressed as me and are just as passionate, just as deeply connected. You know, I don't know if there's such thing as a better fan or uh, a crazier fan. But then we don't get enough credit. We're, we're, we're awesome. We're loyal. I mean, what other fans do you know go 0 and 26 and, and still fly the color? You know, we're not part time here. We're, you know, we're here 12 hours every Sunday. The food banks were empty in Tampa, and I said, you know what, next week, everybody has to bring a jar of peanut butter. And just to start some crazy things, if we made one dime at the tailgate, we'd pick a charity on Monday. It's phenomenal. We always knew that people wanted to do better, they just needed to know how. And uh, so we're staying in Atlanta, and then we're going to go to New Orleans. So we're New Orleans on the docket, and then... Uh... Miami? New Orleans, Miami, and Dallas, Dallas, and Green Bay. So we have some good cities coming yeah. up, which is exciting. Um, not that Tampa Bay isn't a great city, um, but uh, we're, so we're excited about that. But this has been um, this is the this is the this is the hard part. I don't care what anybody says. Having to go rent cars—it's like planes, trains, and automobiles. You know, having to go rent cars, pick the rental car back. You know, have to hide one member of your party or something because they only allow two people in the tow truck, and all that sort of crap makes it all. Just make me want to punch somebody's teeth in. And, uh, not me. It's all. Where you go, Buddha? What were you gonna say? Not me. You know what we gonna say though? It's all just part of what we have to do. But and you know, like I say, every time we, every time we're faced with a little bit of adversity, we run into guys that'll let us ride in the bus on top of the wrecker. Just stay down. I mean, how, how cool is that? Um, we're just fortunate to be rolling on the road, I think. And your attitude will change once we get to Atlanta and we forget about it. We put this in the past and we roll through uh, Miami. A and... little, uh, little excitement on a Tuesday night here in Atlanta, Georgia. We are on our way uh, and we're about five miles from Eric's sister's house and the brakes go out on Hail Mary. And we pull into this random industrial parking lot we're going about five miles an hour. I jump out of the bus to try and stop the bus. The next thing I know, Eric and Red are telling me to get out of the way. They come down this slope right here. And it was, uh, it falls out all the way down this driveway, about uh, 70 yards into those bushes down there, where Rhett brilliantly missed the, uh, the logs here along the side, which would have completely ruined the bus and drove into uh, basically just some solid thicket, solid bush. Stop the bus. The legend of Hail Mary continues. <laughs> this is a camping pad. I don't want to get my hands dirty, so I'm going to try this for the first time here. We're going to see how this goes. And uh, I'm feeling it's going to go quite well. Actually, I'm going to have to stretch it out now because I like to do the wide grip. See? Wide grip, like that, right? All right. Stop.
What do you do here? What is that doing for your body? It's uh, cardiovascular. Okay. It's cardiovascular. What do you call this workout? It's cardiovascular. No, but like, you have a name for it? <laughs> yeah, it's called a uh, rubber gray. <laughs> okay, that's cool. The second time was like, okay, you already threw it over once, why would you do it again? It's not the first time he's lost our football. Would you like to explain to us what just happened? I, uh, for the second time, lost the football. Instead of going to Target and getting a new one, now we have the original football. I won. It wasn't even about football, you know? It was about, you know, just the house. First of all, a lot of people said we shouldn't live here anymore. Why do you want to live here? You know, go live somewhere else. And it was just about that happiness coming back and the reason showing like, oh, we're still here and we matter and um, we're alive, <laughs> you know? And we stuck it out. And then, like I said, in 09, they brought it home. <laughs> it was Saints Fit. That, that was the time. Just like, just like Linda said. Wow. Yeah. Well, they had, they had tickets for sale for that game. It was after Katrina, the first First game after Katrina, we haven't had football for a couple of years or whatever. One year, years. and they were threatening to take them away. I think y'all yeah. knew that they're threatening. So we threatening. went. She went mm. to see. She went to see Green, Green Day. Day. It was all because of Green Day. So yeah, <laughs> Green Day. So yeah, else it was all because of Green Day. Uh, when we were in Austin at the Katrina, that's all I played was Green Day's "American Idiot" and the song "Wake Me Up When September Ends." See, it gets me emotional. Was what we felt. You know, August 29th was Katrina, so all of September was hell, and. Um, so when I heard Green Day was going to play the opening game back, that's why I wanted to go to the game. The press pass is thanks to Eric. Uh, Eric has a friend who works in PR uh, and actually runs the sound for the stadium. And it was cool to watch them like a well-oiled machine. Um, especially, you know, when uh, that crunk song plays, like after, you know, the Saints score, like a big touchdown or an extra point and stuff, when... Like the whole, just everybody in here is dancing, you know, when they uh, they play the crunk song. The first one was uh, when Steve Gleason blocked the punt, the Atlanta punt, and we scored, and that was just like the it was the dome coming, and you 2 and Green Day played. Dude was so emotional in here, it was crazy, it was so many people crying, and like big burly dudes are just like, just bawling, and dude, it was just like the best time. That was one really good time. and drop it down and the whole place does the who that chant uh you know that's an incredible moment and like just the whole dome is just doing that uh, um, there's no way to tighten it on there. i got duct tape dude let's duct tape that bad boy just two pieces of duct tape. Will it melt there off? There to there and there to there. Yeah, probably. So we replaced everything in her except for the battery. The battery is 11 volts, meaning it's basically dead. We're buying a battery at AutoZone in uh, Pascagoula, Mississippi. Old Pascagoula. And uh, we are going to try and install it ourselves. I never thought I would see the day where I would be replacing a battery on any car, much less a 1967 VW bus. Hey, what's up? Hey, once you get started, you cross the street. Yeah. Better one down the road going now. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. That's a little Miss Sunshine, this bad boy. Yeah, holding my phone up to hopefully get a hold of the satellite so I can send a Facebook post to the VW air cooled uh, place in Pensacola. We're 16 games in and, uh, and everything's hitting the fan. So, uh, I don't know, Rhett's beside himself. Um, pretty pissed. Eric's doing okay. Um, 
This is uh, <laughs> it's all part of the trip. It's all part of the trip. Yeah. Yay, team! It's fantastic. Now we're gonna go see Wild Bill Tucker, who can hopefully uh, lead us in the right direction and uh, get us back on the road where we don't have to stop. I mean, because that light only goes on because of the altar. It goes on for no other reason. And the fact that we tested the alternator and it's not putting out what it should be leads me to believe it's the alternator. Come to find out, it's this little bitty wire that uh, just needs to be fastened. Just needs to be uh, snapped in place securely. And our problem solved. Got our alternator working right. And, uh, you know, we, we hopefully we won't have any issues the rest of the way. Who doesn't like the band Kiss? So, you know, uh, I got invited into the deep end, which was a uh, kind of a crazy section where they encouraged me to do the face paint. I used to do it occasionally, and then it became the norm. And, uh, here I am. Well, you know, the deep end was an area where all the super fans, all the crazy people, if you will, were all put together. So it was like, hey, these are people just like me that are just as passionate about this team. You know, no matter what the record is, you know, 17 and 0, 1 and 15, we're Dolphin fans till the coffin slams, and that's what we're gonna Seven do. Seven years, I leave my home in Ohio and come down here for five months out of the year, so I can see most of the games. So I'll catch games. Where, you know, because I'm a traveling therapist, when the schedule comes, like you said, when the schedule comes out, I'll look and see and kind of plot, oh, well, I'll go, I'm going there, I'm coming here. And you go back to people. We met a woman named Shelby there, and Shelby is probably one of the biggest fans that I have ever seen in my life. Um, she loves the Cowboys. She's involved in the Cowboys. She shared so much emotion when she talked about how they tore down um, Old Cowboys uh, Stadium and how she didn't even want to leave because that meant it was going to be torn down. Walked out with um, Mickey Spagnola. Yeah. And he he and I are talking and um, and finally he walks out of the gate and I didn't want to walk out the gate because then that meant I, it was time for me to go and I wasn't ready to go and he he leaves and I realize I'm standing there by myself next to this huge pillar that was holding up the stadium. And I, and I knew no one was around and I didn't see or hear anybody. So I just kind of leaned up against it and I just wanted to just hear and feel it. Yeah. And it was on a Sunday, so there was no traffic. I mean, very little cars on the road. And um, if you just listened real close, even though you knew that they had already tore up the ground inside, there was just still that spirit of football that just kind of resonated from I, it that yeah. you just... You don't get here. It's a little bit more Hollywood here. Yeah. It's not home mm -hmm. yet. And I think that they're going to have to do something to try to make us all feel at home like we did at Texas Stadium. And well, they tried to put the stars on the side. And it's not the same stars. It's not the same. But you don't get you don't get Pat Summerall and John Madden on TV and the, and the sun shining through yeah. and you're like... This is I mean, right, the, so, shat, the shadow. The shadow. It was so them. distinctive. Was. And then you have the Tom Landry silhouette. And then you're playing for, for Tom Landry, great. so that's an experience. But it also created an advantage for us to play in Texas Stadium because I think when teams came to Texas Stadium, visited and to play us, they were in awe of that facility. And there's certain quirks to the stadium that sometimes gave us an advantage like the crown in the middle of the field, how it slopes down the side. When the other team comes out and they're running their pass routes and warm up, the quarterback's up on that crown and the receiver's running downhill toward the sideline. So a lot of times early in a football game or early in their preparation for a football game, our opponents, you know, the pass would be going over their heads or timing would be off because of that little quirk in the field. And you had to get used to that. You could sit on the Cowboys sideline on the bench and you wouldn't be able to see nothing but the other team's heads on the other sideline because that crown was so high. And because it was one of the first stadiums designed for the NFL solely for football, uh, they had that crown there for drainage uh, purposes. And, it, and you know, it worked, it helped. 
but it also created an advantage for us because we were used well, to that. how about if y'all, if they have macaroni and cheese there and, you know, the cheese implosion thing, and I, I felt kind of stupid that they gave me macaroni and cheese as I paid to park overnight before the implosion. I'm like, why are you giving me macaroni and cheese? I'm here for, it was like to a, see my stadium go, and it was, it was commercial, and I don't, it's like a, it, it was, it's like a funeral something and you personal. Saw the it's America's team, and, you know, people want to go back and forth with which team is America's team every year, but that's not something that can be given or traded. That's something that was given to the Cowboys based on what they represented for the people of that time, and it's something that's carried on throughout their history. And so it's not it's not really something that can be explained. It's just something that I think every Cowboy fan just understands. And I think if you asked us to really talk about it, it might bring a tear to their eyes because it really is that deep inside each and every one of them. That's all they got. You know what I mean? Because well, no, I mean because, because the, the their baseball team, their basketball team, are in Milwaukee, so it's a ways away. You know what I mean? Where teams like Chicago, New York, LA, all their teams are together. So it's unique because you know it, this is it. If Green Bay didn't have football, I don't think anyone would come to Green. Bay. There are church services that revolve around the Packers schedule. Like if the Packers play at noon, they had trust church service because of that. Ridiculous. I think it's, but this is what we, Ridiculous. if you think about it, our city revolves around this. I mean, no one would know Green Bay if we didn't have a pack, if we didn't have a football team. And I love it for that though. It's a very cool thing. Yeah! Go Bears! Go Bears! You don't have nice people anywhere else. You wouldn't get people like that without getting beer spilt on them anywhere else. Like. We've had so many people compliment us and say, you know what, I love coming here. I've come here year after year and I never had nice people before. You make friends here. How do you feel about the Packers? I did not like them at all. Oh. Tell me why you don't like the Packers. Well, they're, first of all, they're the Bears' rival and anybody that's doesn't like anyone that's a rival of the Bears, I do not like at all. It's at this uh, very prestigious, very luxurious Hotel 6, as you can see. We are uh, staying on the third floor. It's nice lugging all our stuff up here. But uh, this is no vacation. Driving here uh, from Green Bay in the bus, all the cold really started to hit us. And uh, you know, I'm 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 tented up in the back with a sleeping bag over me. You know, Eric's got six jackets, <laughs> six jackets on, <laughs> a scarf on. I see we walk into Rhett and I walked into Target to buy a couple pairs of gloves, and I see Eric sort of huddled over it is it is uh, all of his winter clothes, and he's from Jersey, so I figure if he's cold and I'm cold, then uh, that's good enough for me. It's it's freaking cold. Well, why don't you talk about growing up a Vikings fan, and uh, if you guys can kind of discuss how that started. Did you have any choice in the matter? Not really, <laughs> but that was okay. I mean, I, I clearly became part of the tradition right away. Um, bleed purple from an early age watching football with grandma and grandpa on the couch and I mean as I got older realized that we own this stuff and this is part of our family uh, and grandpa's been past rest his soul uh, but we carry it on and it's great to have mom to do it with. Yeah my dad was actually instrumental in bringing the franchise to Minneapolis St. Paul he was on the Richfield Businessmen's Association and so he had a real integral part in bringing the team home. Well, I've been talking to a few people about this, and with PSLs and new stadiums and, and the higher ticket prices, you have to be careful with how much you charge because 
with uh, the technology of TV getting so much better, uh, people may think about staying home and watching the game on their 65 inch or going to a bar where it's a little less expensive than paying for a ticket and doing all the driving downtown. So that's that's what worries me. Yeah, I think the same thing. You know, there's you're coming here for the game. I mean, it's an experience that I think all fans should should have. Um, you know, some of us have been doing it, doing it for a long time, and we enjoy it. But you know, tailgating is is is, a, is part of the you know it, it, it's part of the enjoyment. And you know, with, with the new uh, the new stadium, they're talking about well, you know, they'll you know, maybe off-site tailgating, bus people in, or, you know, they're more concerned about, you know, cramming this thing into the downtown environment than, you know, taking care of the people that are paying a bill. So, you know, and fine, you know, they have all the all the TV contracts and, all, you know, all, all that stuff, but that's going to look kind of silly with an empty stadium. We moved into Baltimore. We met, um, super fan by the name of Purple Dame. She had the most elaborate woman cave I've ever seen. It's better than any man cave I've ever seen. Purple Dame to me is one of my favorite interviews, very emotionally connected to the team. She became a fan of the Ravens when they won the Super Bowl in 2000. She was really uh, quite a sweet lady. She had a lot of insight. She, you know, there was a lot of heart behind what she was. It wasn't was a big deal for, for a football team to move. I mean, you had the, a, you know, the AFL, and but then when it became the NFL and it was you know, a, a, a marketing engine was put on it, and big money is being made off of it, and and it and it's building and building, and, and big cities want big teams and big wins and big trophies. Cole and snuck out of Baltimore in the middle of the night, loaded up the Mayflower trucks. Uh, the town had already built a practice facility for him, was in the middle of building a new stadium. Uh, we stuck the team out there in the middle of the night. Well, when it was announced on the 11 o'clock news that night, we decided by celebrating with some Colt 45 bought liquor. Feelings started to get hurt when teams started to move. And But one thing that's very respectable about it all, um, unlike Ursay, is that when Art Modell moved the Browns to Baltimore, Cleveland kept their history. He didn't want it. When Ursay took the Colts, he took the history. And when the city of Baltimore wanted to buy it for a reasonable amount, Ursay put a price tag on it that was so high that it would be impossible for an owner to afford it or a city to afford it. So knowing that that, is, that was the last straw with Ursay, unfortunately, I don't have any kind words for someone that could be that maniacal. And that's what gets me excited. Not the same excitement that when you're in the stadium because, you know, you're full tilt. I mean, you're, you're jacked out crazy when you're in that stadium. Well, I'm one of those fans that I don't, I come and give everything I got. When I'm at the game, my section 146 in the north end zone has a go post. When, when I leave, I'm totally drained. A lot of times I don't have a voice. But, you know, even Jacksonville game, I mean, you give everything you got, and they expect that of you, you know? Uh, as being a, a Hall of Fame fan of the year in 2004, you just, you, you want to bring it. And I believe that I'm like a warrior, you know? But I mean, and of course, I, the, doing the outfit and stuff like Captain America and Titan Man, that was an idea from a lunchbox. Well, now, uh, I do have the, the, it's called the Titan Man Love Shield, if you see the shield a little bit on there. Uh, it has the double flame. Okay. There's nobody like that. And I, I put the love on the opponent, and uh, not good love, it, you know, put the love on them and, you know, and I also, you know, just like I said, just getting the fans into it. And they know when I say get up, I mean get up. Yeah, it's, third, it. it's third down and nine. We gotta have this stuff. When I stand up and start waving to them to get up, they get up. And that's just uh, that's my mindset. I mean, and when I leave the, when I leave the game, whether we win or lose, I gave all my heart, all my soul, all my love. And that's just that's how you have to bring it 
Especially if you're going to dress up like this crazy guy that I do. <laughs> riding in my old Jeep and it just did not have enough room. So we're like, well, let's get, we need to get something bigger. And so Ty went out on a whim and bought this old crappy medical supply van. Uh, we fixed it up. He got the engine tuned up. We put a paint job on it. We actually saved money in a pickle jar to get it painted and decal. Uh, and there, here we are. I mean, we've taken it all over, taking it to Dallas, Charlotte, Atlanta. It's it's been around. Very proud of it. How does it add to your experience here? Oh, Jack and it's just so, I mean, they, they have a Facebook page. So there's Jack and Wagon on there. And a lot of people come around. People that come in for different games from teams will stop by here and we'll see them every year. It's kind of it's a really neat deal. It's those games where you just come from behind and win. Like uh, a few years ago, I don't know if you remember this, Doug. The Houston game with the monster 50-yard pass, that's what I live for, when the whole stadium just loses its mind over a big moment. Right. And that's, that's what it's for. It's for like high-fiving a stranger over the best thing that's ever happened. That's what I miss the most over this year. This year's been awful for that. Yeah. I miss that. I know how that is in the VW bus. How does the uh, the bug add to the experience? Right? Oh, it's so cool. Everybody loves it. You go down the road and everybody waves at you and hollers. Like we have it in uh, some local parades, you know, to show our support. Um, it's just, it just makes it a funner experience. My favorite and most interesting of all the fans is probably Catman. Uh, he's got a protege with him named Fat Cat. Um, and they were very, very funny guys, interesting. Yeah, they dress up and they have they have gear like Titan Man, um, but it's a part of who they are. Um, I'm glad that they're doing what they're doing. You know, it's, it's a cool thing. You know, I sing the fight song. Yeah, when I go places. Stand and cheer for the Panthers. Stand and cheer for our team. The pride of the Carolina, the city of the Queen. Hey! Stand and cheer for the Panthers in our favorite name. Nothing could be finer than to be in Carolina at a Panthers football game. When we come to the preseason games in August, it's 85, 90, in some cases 95 degrees. By, by January, it's below zero, although tonight, tonight's going to be probably as cold with the wind chill as I've, I've experienced in the last 20 years. Well, when I was born, my uh, parents put a Patriots hat on my head to keep me warm about uh, three hours into my existence. So it was pretty easy from there. Well, I was fortunate uh, to have a father who was extremely into sports my entire life, and he was also the best man at my wedding. So we've spent a lot of time together uh, watching sports, and our relationship really developed through sports. It's a man's game in many ways, um, and uh, it's a bonding experience. It's all about uh, you know being together, uh, camaraderie, uh, you know, team, those concepts. Well, I, look, I, have, I have two sons and, and a daughter. And uh, I look forward to, to sharing the same experience with my family as time goes on. It's kind of a tradition that my father started that I hope to carry on forever. Whether they win or whether they lose, you know, it's, it's, uh, to me, it's, it's what it's all about. Oh, man. some of that pork over there, Cheesy? No. Indian don't eat pork. Yeah, God bless you, man. I've been a Redskins fan since day one. It has been nailed into my head. I love them so much. Other than that, you do get a, a good mixture of like Eagles fans, but that's poor parenting. What are you going to do? Uh, <laughs> every once in a while you get a Dallas fan, yet again, poor parenting. But, but you know, <laughs> it happens. Redskins win a Super Bowl with their, with their current name. I do not want to see my name change, and I want to see them win a Super Bowl, and I just want everybody else to bask in our glory. But the mascots are still here. We got rid of 2,000 of them. But the Redskins are still here. But they're going to go to with that. The best way to describe it is this. I, I, when I try to tell 
people the difference between FedEx field and FedEx field seems antiseptic. It seems, you know, and, and, and it, it's almost contrived. It, they, 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 were, they were forcing the music in over the, you know, to try to, you know, double up the sound. And it, we didn't need that at RFK. We had everything we needed right there in the stadium. We didn't need the extra speakers and the extra noise. But I still get chills when I think about sitting there in December. It's, you know, obviously you're, you're, you're freezing, but it's fourth quarter. Uh, you know, Dallas is trying to drive, you know, maybe they're behind and they've got the ball and you are screaming so loud and, 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 and you're, up, you're, you're jumping up and down and the whole second level would start vibrating. And it was just, there was nothing like it. It, it, it just, it, you, you, you felt like you were affecting the game. And then, and, and, you know, when you, when you, when you get them to, to, to get that false start penalty and you've been the 12th man and you, you've done your job, there was just, there was nothing like that. I haven't, I, I haven't had that feeling at FedEx Field. I mean, I've probably, I, I probably went to 50 games at RFK and I've probably been to 20 at FedEx Field. It's just not the same. It's just not the same. I think we've lost sight of what the game is really about. That it was all you needed was a football. Mm -hmm. That's all you needed. <laughs> Baseball was a little harder because you had to find a field. And you, had, you, know, you know, if you had a football and, and enough room to, to throw it, <laughs> you had a game. The Packers and Lions on Thanksgiving Day. Thanksgiving in Detroit is a great, great place to be. Um, we, we found it to be a fantastic venue. It was, you know, Ford Field is great. Lions fans were awesome, the Hawaiian blue. Mm -hmm. I've always wanted to see that game on Thanksgiving Day because it's one of the two teams that has always has a Thanksgiving game. Seeing it as a little boy all the way up, I mean, it was, we ate, my family always ate during the Lions game because we always wanted to watch the Cowboys game. So whenever the Lions were playing, the TV would be on, but um, that's when Thanksgiving dinner would be be served. So I have a lot of memories, a lot of family memories of you know just years gone by of Thanksgiving food and football and family. That's what it's about. For me, I'm here every Thanksgiving, whether it's Turkey Day or not. We're here. We do Thanksgiving Day game, then we go home and eat, and we eat leftovers after everybody chowed through it. Those of us that are football fans would rather be here than at home eating first served at the table. <laughs> well, this uh, goes way back tradition. Uh, I used to come to this game. I was in high school, my dad used to bring me Tiger Stadium a long time ago, and uh, it brings back so many memories. Um, we lost uh, we lost Hail Mary for the last time in driving back to Cincinnati. You know, I, I guess the brakes went out again, and I rolled back into an intersection. We rolled through two intersections without brakes, without a horn, and uh, I had just done it for the last time. I, I couldn't take a chance anymore. Uh, we were going way out west where there's mountains. Uh, there's so many bad things that can happen and I didn't have anybody that I trusted to fix it in the time that we needed to fix. And to be honest with you, man, we really, really miss Hail Mary. I miss the bus. I mean, it's, 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 it's almost sick in a way. It's almost, it, it's weird. The last sticker of our tour here. In Hail Mary. In Hail Mary. It's gonna be the, uh, Indianapolis Colts. My prophecy is it'll be a cool place to go to. <laughs> it'll be a good time. Yeah, it's all the Super Bowl, so uh, we're on our way there right now. Steve and go. You feel like you walk in, you're like, oh my god, this is what it's like to be a Hoosier. And, you know, it's, it, it's, it's remarkable. Indian is the crossroads of America, you know. People go through, they, they, you know, they drive through it. They, 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 don't, they don't stop to actually take, take in what they're seeing. And what they're seeing is the heartland of America. In the case of the Colts winning a Super Bowl here, I never actually really thought I would see one in my lifetime as a fan. But that's probably the most rewarding thing of all these years of, of you know, being diehards, uh, was to finally get that ring and get that trophy. And one of the coolest parts of the experience was running into a bunch of true blue 
Los Angeles Rams fans they had come out for the game, you know, and they were just incredible. Passion they had for the LA Rams. Uh, there's no question that there's a fan base waiting for the LA Rams. As far as these fans were concerned, the Rams have just been on a 20 year vacation from Los Angeles and St. Louis was just borrowed time. He's been a diehard Rams fan since 63. He watched Roman Gabriel and Vince Ferragamo and all those great, greats. Uh, but when I was born, it was December 18, 1983 and it was the Rams versus the Saints and they were in New Orleans. And it was basically a very, it was a big game decider, you know, and it came down to the very last field goal. My dad was uh, in the waiting room and my mom was in the delivery room. The doctor came over the intercom like, Michael Griffin, you know, your son's about to be born, can you please come in here? 10 more seconds, they're about to kick it. <laughs> Choice. We had two teams in LA, we had the Raiders and Rams. And I remember my dad said the Raiders were cool. And I thought about it. And then I remembered um, they, they were gonna move to Irwindale, which to me may as well have been St. Louis. I didn't know what that was. And then I linked up with the Melonheads. That was like the crazy end zone on the other side. So we went over there and I found out they all lived in Venice and Santa Monica. So I, I asked them for rides and they said, yeah, you could come, but you gotta wear a melon. So I, I said, all right, no problem. Raiders are amazing. Uh, you know, you hear all these things like, you know, Raiders fans are thugs and all the gang affiliation and uh, it's dangerous at Raiders game. But it's one of the best stops we had. It's it's in the top ten. Um, we ran into Lester Hayes, the famous uh, uh, Raiders secondary player in those uh, glory years and the Super Bowl years. Has two Super Bowl He's rings with the Raiders. Standing love. Of course, outstanding passion. God, God is this. I'm a champion. This is this. Our fans, of course, it was psychological stimuli because of cheer. Of course, it turned into, a, I mean, a serious roar. Guys, I love our fans, and they actually don't just say it, but of course, it's a silver and black. Of course, sensation of love. Our fans are the greatest fans, of course, in the National Football League. Guys, in life, is peaks and valleys. Mike, the DJ, and Sandeep, the artist, were uh, just incredible people. Um, Sandeep's kind of a, you know, an artistic, introverted type of guy, and he does these incredible sketches of of Raiders did Sebastian Janikowski you saw day one since I've come to this tailgate like at first I didn't really know a whole lot of people here uh, a guy by the name the guy who started the black hole named Rob Rivera also known as black hole Rob he invited me to the tailgate and uh, I got to know everybody and this was like in 2010 and ever since then I felt right at home like this family like this this the best people in the world right here yeah what he told me really touched me one time two things but he used to kind of, I remember seeing him, and then Rob introduced me, and then after he became friends a little bit, he goes, you know, Mike, he goes, I would stand out here and watch you guys, and I was scared to come up because I didn't know none of you. He goes, and I didn't know if you guys were going to, you know, like, uh, uh, be friends with me. And this is while he's in my garage. Now he's a personal friend, and we're ha watching the Red Warriors on TV. Now he's a personal friend of mine, and he's telling me this story, right? We had been drinking a little bit, so the truth serum, right? He goes, I was just scared to come up. He goes, but I'm so glad that I came up and talked to you that first time. Now he's like a main guy, right? And, uh, and so sometimes people have things in their life that are lacking or they're missing, either family members or their grandparents or their dad's not there or a brother. And they kind of get that feel of family here. And, and that's what we, we strive for. Well, uh, in society, I feel kind of like an outcast uh, sometimes. And um, the Raiders have always been known to be an outcast of the, out of all, the rest of the 31 teams of the NFL. They've been different. And, you know, that's, that's one thing I like. I can relate to the Raiders. And, and I've also been, I was born in Oakland, so that's another reason. But just relating to the fact that they've, they're an outcast, and, you know, I feel like that sometimes. So when, I, when I'm here, I feel like I'm right at home, like I fit right in. You know, it means a whole lot.
we sort of realized, I think, is that, you know, and we realized it from, from the very beginning in Denver with Rocky, is there's a difference between being a true knowledgeable fan that cares a lot and is passionate about the team, and a super fan who's more, um, less interested in the well-being of the team, and more interested in, uh, I don't know, being seen. Being safe, yeah. thousands when I started hanging out with some of the people that you're going to meet here today. Mr. and Mrs. Seahawk, Cannibal, Kiltman of course, Laura, and uh, just started seeing how much fun they were having, how much they were contributing, how great a cheerleader, cheerleader and fan they were. Started small, started with a few stripes, developed my own character. Uh, somebody saw me wearing sunglasses at night and they said, you look like Weekend at Bernie's. <laughs> And it, and it stuck. But you're, but you're much more uh, vibrant than burning. Thank long you. Suffering, you know, long suffering, you know, through the good years and bad years, which is what makes a year like we're having now enjoying the fruits of our labor. You know, it's, uh, you know, you take the good with the bad, you know, and we've been through enough bad years where it's like, okay, let's enjoy this. You know, we've been through a year where we thought we really had it all in hand, only to have it kind of taken away from us uh, in Detroit. Which I was there to watch the whole thing unfold, and it's pretty disheartening. But, uh, you know. Do you think it makes it sweeter because you have had some suffering? Oh, absolutely, yeah. You know, and that's the thing about this year. In 2005, we had a great championship year. We won the we won the Hallis Trophy. Went went to Detroit, played in Super Bowl 40. But that year went by so quick, and this year that's come along, I've taken every minute just to savor it. When we had a bye week. I didn't have withdrawals, like, oh, what's going on with football? Because no, I'm going to enjoy this. I'm going to savor every moment of this because this is what's going on now. And before I know it, this season's going to be over and we'll be waiting for next year. But I'm going to enjoy the now. I'm going to love the now. And I'm going to enjoy every element of the 2013 I think what I'll miss the most is uh, the camaraderie of what we've uh, what we've done here. Camaraderie of being together. Uh, it's a long time to be with people, you know. Uh, a long time to be with two people, uh, and getting to know these guys over four months has uh, been a big deal. And uh, you know, I'm forever connected to them because of that. We all hope to get something out of this, but uh, in the at the end of the day. What are you doing, really? You're going on a trip uh, to 31 NFL stadiums in 16 weeks because you care about somebody. Uh, you care about their dream, you believe in their dream, and, uh, and you hope you learn some stuff along the way and you get to see the country, and we have, and that's been nice. And I think it's important to kind of reflect on what brought us here, what, what things transpired to make this entire tour possible. And there's so many things that happened. Uh, the reason why I'm here, partly to do what, what the reason the other people are here too. The truth is really the most compelling thing and we really kind of owe it all to this guy right here. Had we not met Steve Sable and gotten his interview, unfortunately I think it may be his, his final interview in the Super Bowl of 2010 in Dallas, this never would have happened. And I said before this trip on the phone to uh, a producer at NFL Films, the best thing we can do is make Steve Sable proud. And, uh, and I think we've done that on that trip. I hope we've done that. Well, either way, we took him around the NFL. We took him around one last time. time. Yeah. So, Every stadium. And, so yeah. he was with us all the way, no matter what vehicle we took. <laughs> this is so awkward. <laughs> I, I produced a show called They Call It Pro Football. Hmm. And everything that you see today, I mean, that film, Sports Illustrated, 20 years ago, called it the Citizen Kane of sports movies. The mont montage, uh, that was the first time a montage was used. The first time a telephoto lens was used. The first time there was a section on the follies. The first time a quarter, we, we had a camera just stay on the quarterback. Uh, we used original music. We used a narrator by the name of John Facenda, mm -hmm. that great oak. All those things happened in that one film 
And Pete Rosell saw it, and then the next day he called up my dad and I, and he says, you know, that, that wasn't a highlight film, that was a real movie. And that is, when you think of the, the genesis of the NFL film style, you can go right to that film, and that's where it all started. You got all my best material. Yeah. <laughs>